Let's go. I said, Walter Jones. Who is it? I said, Walter Jones. What's his name? I said, Walter Jones. Who show is it? I said, Walter Jones. Who is it? I said, Walter Jones. Say it again. I said, Walter Jones. Who you with? I said, Walter Jones. Who you with? I said, Walter Jones. The Sir Walter Jones Show with co-host Alvin Carter. We are a Christian talk show in which we tackle all the hot topics in the believer's walk. It's Fireside Friday. Grab a cup of coffee, sit back, relax, and be encouraged in the Lord. Azusa Street is now just a quiet little alley near downtown Los Angeles. But a hundred years ago, this was the site of a revival unlike any seen since the events of Acts chapter 2. Starting in April 1906, dozens, then hundreds, then thousands of Christians were baptized in the Holy Ghost at this rundown ramshackle mission building. They spoke and sang in tongues, found a new depth of prayer, and saw healings and miracles. Eventually, they took this refound blessing all around the world. Vincent Sinan, editor of the Century of the Holy Spirit. It started the worldwide Pentecostal movement, which today has over 600 million people in the world, second only to the Roman Catholic Church in size. So it has to be seen as a very major event in church history. But this isn't where it all started. A full five years before the Azusa Street Revival began, its roots were planted deeply here in Topeka, Kansas, along a road called Stone Avenue, in a place called Stone's Folly. That was the nickname for the building where the Bethel Bible School met and where Pastor Charles Parham and several dozen students were anxiously pursuing a deeper walk with God, a baptism in the Holy Spirit that would fill them with his power. Parham and the students had come to believe the evidence of this baptism would be speaking in tongues, like seen in the book of Acts. Right around the first hour of the first day of the new century, January 1st, 1901, Agnes Osmond asked Parham to lay hands on her and pray for this baptism and the gift of tongues, and the prayer was swiftly answered. Agnes often became the first person this century to speak in tongues, and that started the Pentecostal movement as we know it today. Phil Johnson covers the religion beat for the Topeka Capital Journal. Agnes Osman, uh, it was said, spoke in Chinese for three days straight. She couldn't speak in English at all. Then all the other students, or many of the other students, began to speak in tongues as a result of that over the next few days. Parham took his beliefs about the Holy Spirit with him to Houston, Texas, where five years later he opened another Bible school. One of his most fervent followers there, was a young black pastor, William Seymour. Because of the segregation laws of the time, though, Seymour couldn't actually sit in Parham's classroom, but had to listen from out in the hallway through the door that Parham left open for him. Even though he himself had yet to speak in tongues, Seymour became an ardent advocate for Parham's doctrines as this one-eyed son of a former slave moved to Los Angeles to take a preaching job. But after just one sermon in which Seymour preached about tongues and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, his new congregation, mightily offended, had locked Seymour out of the church. Two black families took the cash poor pastor into their homes till he could get enough money to return to Houston. But till then, they had him lead prayer meetings, most of them in this big house on Bonnie Bray Street. And a few days into a 10-day fast they would held specifically seeking the Holy Ghost, he suddenly filled them. First Seymour's good friend Edward Lee when Lee was getting prayed over for healing. Wilma Berry of Joshua Ministries met us in front of the Bonnie Bray house. They came running down here for the Bible study to share with everyone the testimony, Edward Lee is filled, and he was healed too, praise God. And then everyone from there was filled. Louise Johnson is a tour guide at the Bonnie Bray House. Then he started to give his testimony. And when he gave his testimony, it was happening then. It was going on. The house went wild, and suddenly everyone was swept to their knees before God. And many began to speak in tongues, Seymour among them. And Seymour's future wife, Jenny Evans Moore, received another special gift that night. The Holy Ghost filled Sister Jenny Moore, and she was not a pianist. She did not know how to play the piano. But that night, when she was filled with the Holy Ghost, God also showed her how to play the piano. And she was praying, playing, and singing in a language that was not her native language. Jenny received the gift of playing the piano, and she had that gift up until her death. The people in the house were so excited, they poured out onto the porch, where Seymour began to preach as an excited crowd gathered. Even the fire department was called that literal, they thought flames were coming from the top of the house. The house was filled with people, filled with the presence of the Lord. It was such an uproar that people came literally from all over the city. 
the house was filmed for several days with masses of people jamming the yard in Bonnie Bray Street. Then, just a few days before a killer quake hit San Francisco, there was a young person who came to the porch when the crowds grew out in the street, and they prophesied the great San Francisco earthquake. I mean, that brought the fear, and that also brought curiosity, and they got a lot of people coming to see what was going on. People rushed the porch, the porch caved in, and they had to find a larger place. And that's when they moved to Azusa Street. The Azusa Street mission had been an abandoned church building. Apartments upstairs, dirty old stable for horses downstairs. Nothing's left now, just a short alley and a plaza where the small mission once stood. And it ran uh, 60 feet in this direction and 40 feet in that direction. Fact, Cecil Roback, the world's leading authority on Azusa and author of Azusa Street, Mission and Revival, gave us a tour of the area. We would actually be standing inside the mission at this particular point uh, on the plaza. The services took place where the horses used to be stabled. Up to 1,500 people might try to jam into the main room, with those who couldn't fit filling every window. On a hot day or night, it could be tough to breathe beneath the eight-foot ceiling. Everybody was having to fight the flies all the time. The, the, you know, the horses had been in there, they had done their business, the flies were hatching out, and it was an incredibly uh, awful place to have to worship. And yet, here were hundreds and hundreds of people attracted day after day, staying many times all night long uh, in order to be where God was doing something. The presence of God was so heavy on the Azusa Street mission, people sometimes reported being knocked to the ground by it, blocks from the mission. Inside, they said the Holy Spirit himself ran the meetings, which often went non-stop around the clock, filled with healing signs and wonders. One of the most striking features was an impromptu singing in tongues, where all the voices in the room would harmonize in what was soon dubbed the Heavenly Choir. Sometimes Seymour was hardly visible in these meetings, as he'd pray for hours with his head tucked inside the hire of two boxes nailed together to serve as a pulpit. But his leadership was rarely needed, as the Spirit appeared to orchestrate dozens of people testifying, singing, and preaching in each meeting. Anybody, regardless of their age, could be six or they could be 60. Uh, it didn't matter whether they were black or white or brown or any other color. It didn't matter what their level of education was. It didn't matter what their gender was. They were understood to be a real priesthood of all believers in which every believer had something to give, something to contribute. But a main feature of Azusa was people falling before the Lord, getting baptized in the Spirit, and beginning to speak in tongues. Local newspapers like the Los Angeles Times mocked it over and over. An early headline read, Weird Babble of Tongues, New Sect of Fanatics is Breaking Loose. Critics have said that these tongues weren't really languages at all. But listen to this. Once a Jewish man went into the mission to gather evidence about tongues to use it in sermons against Christianity. When he went up a staircase in the mission, a young lady pointed a finger at him and in perfect Hebrew, his native language, told his first name, last name, what he was doing in Los Angeles, and gave him a record of all his sins. He asked where she learned Hebrew. She said she didn't know she was speaking in tongues. He fell to his knees and repented on the spot. People would come into the meeting and they would hear their language, Russian and Armenian and various languages, and they would hear the gospel being preached and they will come running to the altar, how do you know my language? And give their hearts to the Lord. Seymour and his fellow believers made sure this revival didn't stay at Azusa, with many rushing off to all corners of the earth to spread its good news. Eddie Hyatt, a scholar who concentrates on charismatic history, says within a century, the Pentecostal faith captured more than 500 million souls, and is blossoming even more rapidly in the 21st century. Growing at the rate of 9 million per year, and what is astounding, this movement didn't exist just over 100 years ago. So it's an incredible thing. It's a, it's a worldwide phenomenon. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from Azusa Street in Los Angeles. Hello, everybody. This is Sir Walter of the Sir Walter Jones Show. This is Fireside Friday. We sit around the mic and we talk about uh, current events, old events, antiquity, <laughs> Moses and his children. <laughs> we just talk. Uh, there's, there's no fire here. But we call it Five Side Friday. We had just a busy, very busy week. We we're on the sh on the air every night, two hours straight. It gets very exhausting. I spend a lot of time studying uh, whatever we're going to talk about before the show. Then I spend a few hours after the show posting it on all the social media sites out there, uh, and uh, then getting ready for the next day. That's my day every day for you. Uh, no cost to you. <laughs> And with the hopes that you uh, pay it forward uh, and that you share our shows with the people of God and let them hear 
uh, the good and the bad and the ugly, because we definitely have that on our show, <laughs> all of it. Uh, and uh, we're not always right. We have discovered that some things we've talked about was dead wrong. But we would do, we'll go on the show the next day and say, hey, guys, we were dead wrong. And we would bring our sources in and uh, try to correct that. And that's what um, being honest is all about. I love honesty. I think we all should live by that. Unfortunately, many of us who are Christians don't do that. Uh, and uh, it's it's disheartening. So when you know you're wrong, and especially if you are a public figure like myself, and you did it and you you taught something wrong over the air, you need to let the people know over the air you was wrong. <laughs> Don't do it in secret because now you still have misled people astray, and they won't know that you think otherwise because, you know, the offense happened on the air. Okay, so hopefully today... We will try to stay rooted and grounded in the word and and the proper interpretation and see what we can make sense of this. Our show today is talking about the Azusa Street and the effects of uh, Pentecostalism around the world. What has happened to us? What happened? um, uh, Why is it that, um, you know, we met and then now we are separated? We're segregated in our churches. Sunday is the most segregated day of the week. Uh, we'll sing each other's songs, but we'll sing it in our own houses of worship. You sing it over there, I'll sing. You sing my song over there, I'll sing your song over here. And uh, the East will never meet up with the West, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's a shame that it has to be that way. And so we're gonna we're gonna start at the very beginning of what this whole Pentecost uh, is, and see if we can make sense of it. Those of you who do not like to study Jewish or Hebrew culture uh, studies and and what have you, shame on you, because God gave us a Hebrew (laughs) to save the world. (laughs) He did. So if God gave us a Hebrew to save the world, why aren't we studying the Hebrews? (laughs) I don't get it. It's a Hebrew that saved the world. The Hebrew died for me. It wasn't a Gentile. Too complicated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I don't understand it. So if you guys are not reading the Torah, you're not reading the Old Testament. All right. And I know some of the things uh, Jesus has uh, has uh, completed and you wouldn't have to do th- those things. Uh, but uh, uh, in order to understand who he is, you need to understand what they did mm-hmm. uh, and what why God established the feasts uh, that he did. Uh, and and there are many of them again, but we don't we don't we don't talk about them. The Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of uh, uh, Purim, which came along a little later, the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur. We hear, we hear about those, but right. we don't, you know, the Feast of Tabernacle. Uh, and um, man, a, a Passover, of course, we all know what that is. But let's let's uh, talk about the Feast of, of Pentecost, since we are Pentecostals. <laughs> right. We call ourselves Pentecostals. Mm-hmm. But we don't know what the Feast of Pentecost is. Okay. That's a problem. That is a problem because we don't know who we are. And that's why, again, uh, the terrorist wins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's why they win. Because um, they, they try to talk to us about us. I, it's a poor uh, salesman who comes knocking on your door with a vacuum cleaner. And then you say, okay, how does this work? Well, I don't know. Uh, go, can you go on Google and see if there's a manual on there? And I just I want to say you this because it really works. <laughs> really, he can't tell. You. Yeah, well, where's the turn? Where's the on button? Well, it's it's all around here somewhere. Okay, will they clean up a shaggy carpet or do I have to? Well, I don't know yet. Let's see. You know, that's how, that's how some of the Christians are. Mm. We can't. We we're horrible salesmen. <laughs> of our religion. Uh, our we're, yeah, we're we're horrible at it. It's uh, we're not professionals. Mm. And somebody said, professional? I'm not a professional. I'm saying, well, uh, I think the Bible said something about hold fast to the profession of your faith. Uh-oh. Come on. Say y'all are profe- you're supposed to be professionals, but supposed y'all are y'all are novices. <laughs> I was a novice once. Not I was Nana. <laughs> I was novice once. <laughs> I knew that was hey, I was Nana. <laughs> she out there on Facebook somewhere. Uh, so the Feast, Feast of Pentecost, really what it's called is the Feast of Weeks. Okay. It's described in Leviticus 2, uh, 23. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Feast of Weeks is the second of the three solemn feasts that all Jewish males were required to travel to Jerusalem to attend. It's in Exodus 23 and, and 14. And you go to Deuteronomy in six, uh, 16 and 16. This important feast gets its name from the fact 
uh, that it starts seven full weeks or exactly 50 days. Okay. You got 50 in your head? Mm-hmm. 50. Okay. This is, this is very important okay. because it helps us understand the whole thing that happened uh, in Acts chapter 2. Hmm. Jesus leaving mm-hmm. and then Acts chapter 2 coming on the scene. This is kind of important. So full, uh, uh, full weeks or uh, exactly 50 days after the Feast of First Fruits. Since it takes place exactly 50 days after the previous feast, this feast is known as Pentecost. Okay. Which is in Acts 2 and 1, mm-hmm. which means 50. 50. Okay. You got that much. All right. So each of the three solemn feasts, it's Passover, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles, required that all able-bodied Jewish males travel to Jerusalem to attend the feast and offer sacrifices. All right. It was required um, unless you were lame and you couldn't, you couldn't travel. All three of these feasts require that first fruit offerings be made at the temple as a way of expressing thanksgiving to God's provision. The feast of first fruits celebrated at the time of the Passover included the first fruits of the barley harvest. The feast of weeks was in celebration of the fruit uh, the first fruits of the wheat harvest and the, the feast of tabernacles involve offerings of the, of the first fruit of the olives and the, and the grape harvest and on and on. And, and so um, those of who are, us who are Gentiles, we see these feasts and we say, hey, it, does, it don't apply to me. It don't make I don't really need to know all of that. OK, mm-hmm. I, I get it. Mm-hmm. I understand. You're not going to wake up every, every day uh, wondering, OK, what what feast week are we? In? Right. OK, I get that. No problem. I still think you're lazy. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're lazy because you go to school for a particular subject. Mm-hmm. Okay. You went to school. You got a degree in psychology. Yes, sir. All right. They had you studying a lot of stuff dealing with psychology. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me some of the classes that you had? Oh, my goodness. Um, we had, um, of course, you, you did the initial psychology um, 101 or whatever. But there was a class that we also had was lifespan and development. Why? Why would you need that? Well, uh, lifespan and development, it, it really, it kind of took you back um, to um, decipher or what was going on basically in your life from 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 the beginning. Mm. And we had to chart out oh. our lives. So we had to go. Really? Back. Yes, we actually did. Well, you see, I'm setting you up, right? Yeah, you are. But you're trying to study psychology. Mm-hmm. You want to graduate. Mm-hmm. Now, you want to go into the college, okay, go right into the psychology class. Right. Don't waste no time. I want psychology. <laughs> I want it now. Right. Teach me everything I need to know. <laughs> Get your degree and go open up a practice. Uh-huh. Okay. But right. they got you studying life something. Yes. They took you to the very beginning, you said? Yes. That's the very beginning true. from when I was born. Mm. So I had to chart it out. And then uh-huh. um, every, like, what, five years or something, you, yeah. you show what, what happened at that point in your life. Really? Yeah. Ain't Until, that something? you know, where you were, you know, yeah. what age you were at that yeah. during that class. Right. And... That uh, it, it was amazing to me because uh-huh. I learned a lot about, about myself. About yourself. <laughs> so the world got it right. Yes. That's yes. amazing. Mm-hmm. So in order for us to know about the the, the, the deity that we serve, mm-hmm. isn't it important to go to the beginning? It is. To find out, okay, the whys? Mm-hmm. Because that's how you find out the what is to find out the whys a lot yes. of times. Yes. Yeah, or, and then to find out the wins. Exactly. Yeah. So I <laughs> sat in that. Goes in there, oh, yeah. I sat in that chair in the psych, psychologist chair mm-hmm. when I was having issues in marriage. OK. And he didn't spend a whole lot of time talking about the now. Mm-hmm. He took me back. He took you back. And he took me back to prior marriage. Yes. He took me back to my boyhood. Uh-huh. I've seen it on TV. Right. I, knew, I knew how it worked before I walked in there because I counsel people. Right. Right. I knew exactly what he was going to do. Mm-hmm. But I still needed it done. Right. Because sometimes I think the work. Uh, some of the worst people are the ones who are in an industry and they don't practice what they preach. Mm-hmm. Preachers don't always practice what we preach. Uh, <laughs> some look at barbers mm-hmm. and hairdressers. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they get the worst hair. <laughs> worst. Although as a woman, I don't know if I would go to you if you, if, as a beautician, I won't go if there. Your hair wasn't I together. Won't go there. Uh, I right. know, I know. Uh, carpenters out there got the worst house. Their uh-huh. house is always unfinished. Oh wow! Always. Isn't that something? It is something. Um, you know, I have you ever gone to a doctor's uh, uh, um, practice, his office, and he's puffing on a cigarette? 
<laughs> he got, that would be a big problem. He got some weed in the drawer. Right. You know, he got cocaine with all this. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, he's got high blood and he's got all these things going on. Yes. But he's trying to tell you what you need to do as far right. as dietary purposes. Right. Okay. This is a lot of the Christians today. It is. We tell everybody what they should and should not do. We judge them. But God, Christ says, you're gonna, if you're going to judge, judge righteously. Mm-hmm. I know y'all always say, don't judge me. That's not what Jesus said. <laughs> he said, if you're going to judge, judge with the same measure. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's another. That's another. It show. is. It is. So Pentecostalism is important. You got to go back to the original, original, and find out what's going on. So if you if you so caught up in New Testament and know not where Jesus come from, mm-hmm. his family, then you got half the story. <laughs> right. Right. Not saying you're gonna go to hell for it. I mean, you're gonna make it in if you if you can keep his commandments, mm-hmm. but. Wouldn't your life be so much fulfilling mm-hmm. if you knew the backstory? If you knew the backstory, if you understood. Yes. It makes you love. If I fall in love, okay, I'm going to ask her a whole bunch of questions about her past. Mm-hmm. Not not her shaky past. Right. I want to know about her mom. Tell me about your dad. Mm-hmm. Tell me right. about your siblings. Right. What was you doing at teenage, when you was a teenager, mm-hmm. okay, uh, you know, in school and what you like to do, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, what you like to eat? What was your first this? Well, uh, I mean, all these backstory questions, because right. that helps me understand the person that I'm mm-hmm. in love with. And then what I want to do, I may want to reenact those moments. Yes. I may want, if she says, well, I remember when I was 15, I had this doll. Uh, they don't make it any morning. And I'm thinking in my mind, how can I get that doll? Right. Because I want to really be one with her. Like the Cosby show. Like the Cosby show. Exactly. <laughs> That was a great episode. It was. Yeah. It was. Uh, so why can't we do that with Christ, though? Mm-hmm. Find out, okay, why, why from Genesis to Malachi did they go through all that just to get to Matthew, Mark, and Luke, John, what Christ did? Because Christ, what Christ did had everything to do with Genesis through Malachi. Mm-hmm. Everything to do with it. Everything. All the feasts and all the He kept saying, I am this. Right. And I am the way. Right. I am the truth. I am the light. I am the tablet. I am all this. Mm-hmm. And you and we who Gentiles will read, hear him say that, say, well, what does he mean by that? That doesn't mm-hmm. make sense. Mm-hmm. You know why it don't make sense? Because we went to the movies, mm-hmm. popcorn in hand, and we eat and we saw the opening script. And in the middle of the movie, we got bored and walked out. Right. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And didn't see it through to the end. You didn't see it. You didn't see it through to the end. And that's that's a lot of the Jews that I know. Mm-hmm. That's some of them are those who are not uh, uh, Messianic Jews. Mm-hmm. They're, they're still looking for a savior to come. Yes. He didn't came and gone <laughs> and coming back again. Oops. But what they right. did was they 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 got up in the middle of the movie and walked out. And walked out. As soon as Malachi closed the book, they were like, I'm out too. Okay. We're done. Yeah, but the Pentecostals, we we did the same, same thing because we got to the movies late. Ooh. We walked in there in the middle of the movie and then we we watched the movie until the very end. That's deep. And okay. then so we don't know what happened at the beginning. Right. But we do know at the end that the butler did it. Right. But why did the butler did it? Right. It don't make right. sense. Right. Right. <laughs> you see where I'm going? I, I see exactly where you're going because yeah. that's my mentality. Uh-huh. I always like to try to understand how or why things work the way they do. Or, like you know, like you said, the backstory. Uh-huh. Um, what's that saying? Um, you can't. You can't, uh, and I, I may not be quoting it right. Mm-hmm. You to understand where where you're going, you have to know where you come from. Yeah, you do. Uh, and the, the other flip side is, you're liable to repeat it. This is true. Yeah, uh, <laughs> some past you don't want to repeat. That's true. That's very true. Yeah, um, I'm looking on Facebook here. Uh, let's see, Carolyn McIntyre has chimed in. I don't know if she's listening in, but she says I have outgrown or I have a better understanding of sanctification. Might be the better word, but the old school Pentecostal saints, I will always cherish. Without them, I would not know the way to holiness. Mm-hmm. Being baptized at 12 and church on Sunday was not enough. Uh, okay. Yeah. She's not listening because she says she's waiting on the recorded show. <laughs> 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 I got you. Okay. I got you on that. Okay. So let's, 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 let's uh, spend a few minutes talking about the very beginning of Pentecostalism. And the best way to do that is to go to the book. Go to the book. Uh, Acts, uh, let's go to Acts chapter 1. Okay. Chapter 1 and verse 9. If you can read that, it doesn't matter what version you have. Because okay. I know that's your next question. <laughs> what version? How well do you know me? Yep, yep. Know you that much. And when he had spoken these things, yeah. while they beheld, he was taken up. Mm-hmm. And a cloud received him out of their sight. Okay. 
uh, Jesus is talking to the disciples. Mm -hmm. Okay. Talking about the end time and, uh, and all the things that he said, you're not going to know this. You're not going to know that. But hey, listen, I tell you what, uh, you shall receive power after that. The Holy ghost has come upon you. Mm -hmm. And he said, you're going to be witnesses unto both uh, unto him in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and in the uttermost parts of the earth, mm -hmm. all over the place. Right. All right. And then, you know, a private pre prior to that, Jesus blew on them. <laughs> Say receive the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, isn't it? Uh huh. Uh huh. Receive. Okay. Right. I did a study on that. And I can't. I don't know if I want to go deep into that. But re means what? Re. Re. Uh huh. R e means what in a word? Uh, I don't to know. To re. Yeah, what? you do. Repeat. I don't know. What does repeat mean? Do over. Oh, so re means. Do over. Uh huh. Right. Okay. You say receive. Oh, see, I know where you where you okay, could be I'm going just, with just, that. Yeah, I'm just deep like oh, that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Wow. Hey, yeah, I'm just deep like that. So we mm. we'll do we'll wait till Alvin Carter and Art gets here, and they can yes, they you can do ensemble that. that. I, yeah, because I know exactly where you're going. Yeah. With that. Okay. All right. So mm -hmm. uh, nine, you read that right? Yes, I did. What did ten say? And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in mm -hmm. white apparel. Yeah, they were angels. Mm-hmm. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, mm -hmm. why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Yeah. This same Jesus. Same doc. Which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Yeah. So when he come back again, his second coming is going to be the same way right here. If you want to know how he's going to come back in the second coming, mm -hmm. all you got to do is read Acts read, 1, read 10, and 11. Yeah. You'll see him. you see the way he did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because when his feet come back and hit the ground it's gonna it's gonna an earthquake is gonna happen it's gonna se sever that land from the east to the west it's gonna be amazing mm -hmm. you have to go to Zechariah, i think if you know find all that good information uh okay so let's set this up because it got about one minute for break mm -hmm. so you got the ascension of christ goes up the then the anticipation of the spirit is going to come mm -hmm. okay uh then they begin to appoint matthias he's okay. he re he replaces that uh that dude who uh, hung himself in the, yeah, and bowels went all over the place. Oh, okay, old yeah. Judas. Okay. <laughs> all right, yeah. Old, old lion <laughs> Judas. Okay. And and uh, and then then enters uh, chapter two, which mm -hmm. is where the Pentecostals live their entire lives on, mm. uh, which is, can cause some problems. Mm -hmm. And we need to talk. We need to go there. All right. Uh, I'm going to go to this break. I think our this is gonna be a Andre Croucher day. No, because if you're gonna if you're gonna sing about anything Pentecostal, Andre, let Andre do it. <laughs> he did it so well. Yes, rest in peace, Andre. I know mm. you will because you're resting in the bosom of the Lord. Mm. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's right. Uh, and so He has given us some of the greatest songs known to man. Yes, he uh, has. across all all genres. Uh, I like this one, though. You don't have to jump no pew. <laughs> <laughs> you Pentecostals out there who are so excited, you're jumping out of your skirts <laughs> and your oh wigs are goodness. falling out <laughs> and your weave can't, <laughs> you didn't tie your weave in, extensions in too good. Andre said, you don't have to jump no pews to prove that you've been born again. <laughs> okay, y'all. We'll be right back. Sir Walter Jones Show. UrbanBroadcastMedia.com and check out the many services Urban Broadcast Media provides. Whether it's social media, video production, radio broadcasting, or audio recording, we got you covered. The following show is paid programming and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Praise. The reason we know that because we brought him along with us. And after we got here, we found him to be already here. Tonight we're not going to have a concert, I said it before, we're going to have church in the evening. You see, Jesus is very easy. This, this song I'm putting together says, you don't have to jump no pews, run down no aisles, no trees, run down your spine, but you know that you've been born. No, my hands didn't shake, the earth didn't quake, no sparks fell from the sky. 
I know that I'm, I'm singing and the mic ain't on. <laughs> I know <laughs> that I've been born again. Under Crouch. That's a good one there, man. That's a, uh, oh, wow. Let me see now. I got I got to try to, I know it was live and something. I, London? I knew, well, he did live in London and he did live at Carnegie Hall. So uh, somebody, I, a Bruni is out there. She'll, she'll let me know which one it is. No, no, we're not gonna play your theme song right now. Huh? <laughs> the, that monster, he ain't here. He's not engineering today, so don't worry. Uh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> that monster. Yeah, so we, we read what we read, and then now let's go to uh, let's go to two, uh, two, Ver- chapter two. Yeah, verse one. What does it say? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, so all it, all the days it's, it's complete now. Here mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were all with one accord mm-hmm. in one place. Okay, they were together. Okay. And suddenly. And they weren't just together physically. They were together mentally. That's right. Mentally. Okay, mm-hmm. they, were, they were one. Okay, remember when I used that, that, that uh, letter, letter, number, <laughs> mm-hmm. 50. 50. 50. Pentecost. Pentecost. Got that? Because mm-hmm. you've got to be able to count to where, what, where did the 50 come from. Okay. Where did it start? Mm-hmm. All right, go ahead. And suddenly. There came a sound from heaven yeah. as of a rushing mighty wind. It was as of. As of. Okay, a mighty rushing wind. And that's very important. Yes. It's, it's, it's not a wind, but like the sound of a wind. Uh-huh. You have to go to John 3 and 8 to kind of understand that concept. Y'all, can, y'all do that at home, okay? It's, it's suggesting that the, 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 the mighty but the unseen power of the, of the spirit. Mm-hmm. That's was as of a mighty. Okay. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues mm-hmm. like as of fire. So it wasn't tongues of fire, but like, what? Like as okay, of so fire. So we got to quote these right. Mm-hmm. We gotta know, okay, so John the Baptist foretold how the spirit baptism would be accomplished by mm-hmm. wind and fire. It's mm-hmm. in Matthew 3 and, and uh, 11. Okay. And Matthew 3, uh, 11 and, and 12. Uh, this might also be an, an, an allusion to the burning bush as well in Exodus 3. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, and two, uh, it was a symbol of the divine presence. Mm-hmm. Uh, this outward manifestation of the spirit comes from you know another sign of its powers. All right, so you got a rushing mighty wind, and then you got tongues like as a fire. All right, I just broke yeah. that down for you guys. Very good. Free of charge. Go for it. <laughs> and it sat upon each of them wherever they were. Okay, so have you ever been in church and the spirit of the Lord falls? It only falls on just a few people. Uh oh. Okay, you got a you got a question there. Mm-hmm. Y'all ain't all in one accord. That's right. <laughs> all right, go ahead. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. How many of them? All. Yep. And began to speak with other tongues mm. as the Spirit gave them utterance. Other tongues. Okay. Mm. This is where the problem comes in. Because a lot of people are speaking in tongues in our <laughs> churches today. Uh, and you wonder, wonder, okay, why is there no interpretation? And why isn't nobody around the world understand what you're saying? <laughs> because if you're trying to speak by Acts number chapter 2, then it's then you got to speak in other tongues. Okay. Because there are tongues. Okay, I can't, I can't go there. We did it. Go to Spreaker <laughs> and go to the show about speaking in tongues. Because there's a debate on whether there's heavenly tongues. Now, we don't find heavenly tongues in the Bible nowhere. Okay. But we, you have to go to uh, where it says, okay, go to Spreaker. All right, y'all? Because <laughs> you're about to go there. Yeah, and, and I, we break it down with scripture. And my brother Rodney was here. Mm-hmm. Okay. And most of it we agree with. Right. <laughs> I said most. Most. So other tongues, he refers to the spoken human language. Okay. How do we know? Because you got to keep reading. Uh, all right. Mm. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, yeah. devout men, right. out of every nation under heaven. Mm-hmm. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, mm-hmm. because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Oh, so this wasn't heavenly tongues. Mm. These brothers were like, how did you know my language? That's right. So this, this ain't heavenly language. Uh-oh. It's not a language that only gods understand. Mm. Okay, go ahead. Controversy. Uh, con- well, the Bible is it's being controversial. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it just said it itself. I didn't have to say it. And you're a child of God. Ah, uh, yes, I am. And they were all amazed and marveled, yeah. saying one to another, mm-hmm. Behold, what? are not all these which speak Galileans? Yeah, I thought they all was mm. from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how hear we every man in our own tongue yeah. wherein we were born? Wow. Parthians mm-hmm. and Medes yeah. and Elamites yeah. and the dwellers in Mesopotamia wow. and in Judea and Cappadocia mm-hmm. and Pontus and Asia, Phry- Phrygia and mm. Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. They everywhere. Cretes. Okay, you can stop. Okay. okay. <laughs> so there are those of you speaking in tongues. I don't know people today who speak like this in a tongue where, the, where they never studied it. Mm-hmm. But the Holy Spirit came over them and they began to speak in other languages. Other languages. There are some people out there, though. Right. I've heard wonderful testimonies about them. You just don't hear about them in America. Mm-hmm. In other countries, you do. Mm-hmm. And some of the missionaries who come from over here says that they went over there and they began to speak German or Spanish or French or whatever, the Czechoslovakian, mm-hmm. a language they never studied. But the right. spirit came over them. And in order for them to be effective missionaries, the Lord knew that they, they had to give them, them that language. Right. And then they came over here and they can't speak the language anymore. Mm. It was a one-time shot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but we, we only hear about that over there. We don't hear about this over here. Okay. And you don't hear about it in our churches. You rarely, ever, never, ever here speaking in tongues spoken in our church and it has affected someone in the church who don't know that the, our language mm-hmm. and they say oh i understood what he said mm. because we have called those tongues just tongues of uh, of angels okay then why are you speaking it loud over the mic and what have you when boss says you speaking <laughs> to you <laughs> sorry okay I, I, again go to spreaker <laughs> okay so Verse 14, Peter began to preach to preach this about this whole Pentecost thing. What he mm-hmm. says. But Peter, standing mm-hmm. up with the eleven, lifted yeah. up his voice mm-hmm. and said unto them, Ye men of Judea what? and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, mm-hmm. be this known unto you and hearken to my words. 
For these are not drunken as ye suppose. Yeah, they ain't drunk. Mm-hmm. They ain't even time to drink yet. Right. <laughs> Tiny can have them come in the house yet. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sing, it is but the third hour of the day. Oh, the third hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's nine o'clock in the morning. That's right. Okay. But this is that which yeah. was spoken by the prophet Joel. Yeah. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. So the Holy Ghost comes upon people that I've seen that where the young man says, it says what? The young man should do what? Uh, see visions? Young men shall see visions. All right. So, so the young people who receive the Holy Spirit. They begin to see visions, and the old men do what? Dream dreams. They go to sleep. No, no. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> I said, see something. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> they see visions. Okay. Yeah, watch it. You get I, I know. I know. And you know what? I see more. I dream a lot. But my dreams mean they don't mean nothing, really. But uh-huh. my visions, uh-huh. most of them, okay. is significant in my life and in the life of others. So you think you're still young? I'm old because I, 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 I'm actually, I'm old. No, but the young men shall I, see I, visions. I'm trying to tell you. I'm old, so I'm trying to figure out, because I dream a lot. Okay. <laughs> but you got a combination I'm, going I on got, there. I got, my, 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 I have spiritual bipolarism. <laughs> 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 Something going on. Because I've had many dre- uh, visions, and mm-hmm. I have spoken to people about my vision, and it, it, it was confirmed through these people. Okay. A lot. Okay. okay. But my dreams, nah. Yeah. I dream every night. Mm. And a lot of it makes absolutely no sense. You know, I'm finding that's more with men, though, for what? some reason. What? Their dreams, Dream? doesn't really, they don't Mm-mm. barely make sense. Mm-hmm. Because, or, you know, men, we're in, we, we airheads. <laughs> yeah, and y'all probably don't remember the details yeah, of your dream. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to read. Y'all are more detailed than we are. Very much so. But if the Lord needs to get that from something to you and he does it in a dream, mm-hmm. trust me, when you wake up, you're going to remember the details. That's true. Because that's what happened to me last night. I remembered each detail 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 and i remember the person's name in the dream mm. my person i never heard of uh and i heard his name when i woke up and i still remember today mm. uh, at this hour, at this hour. Mm-hmm. which is unusual because i there's you there are no names that drop in my dreams mm-hmm. ever mm-hmm. unless it's my brother or somebody i recognize mm-hmm. but strangers name name the names never pop up in my dream and i knew that was a, a prophetic significance Interesting. That needs to be interpreted. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesus gave parables mm-hmm. in scripture. He never dropped names. Mm-hmm. But that one time, he says, and then there was a man named Lazarus. Mm. And then there was a rich man. Okay. So we we look at that as a parable, as a, a story that is not true. But actually, because he dropped a real name, it was yeah, true. exactly. <laughs> all right, that's another show. I'm yes. sorry for adding all these shows on y'all. <laughs> Station right. breaks. So yeah, I think there's Luke chapter sixteen or Luke seventeen, sixteen. One of those. Y'all go there, okay? And then, and then we go to the practices of the early church in uh, verse forty-two. And I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna go through this real fast. And then chapter three opens with Peter heals the lame man. And then Peter's uh, gives another sermon. So Peter's long-winded. He gives you know long-winded sermons like some of us do. <laughs> okay. And then chapter four comes in. Peter and John and they they put into custody. And then Peter preaches to the Sanhedrin. Uh, it goes on and on, uh, and then he says some very interesting. And neither is there salvation in any other, mm-hmm. for there is none other name under heaven given unto men where we must must be saved. Right. Not well, we might if we want to. Mm-hmm. We must be saved. Must be. Okay. And then the Sanhedrin they co- command Peter not to preach. Shut your mouth. Bridle your tongue. And then the uh, the uh, the apostles go boldly and, and and they pray in the streets. Uh, and then the early church. Uh, uh, they're asking, you know, the, the people who are volunteering, they begin to share. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this, this goes on and on. And I wanted to get to, let's see. Uh, let's see. And you, we know about Ananias and Sapphira. Mm-hmm. Okay. They both lie. And mm-hmm. they, they find, they find out that they, they lied in unison and they died in unison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I shouldn't be laughing. Lord yeah. Mercy. Yeah. And you're okay. True. It is true. Okay, the the apostles they begin to preach and uh, on, on and on and on. Okay, and then the deacons are appointed. Mm-hmm. All right, seven men full of the Holy Ghost, because the apostles were doing stuff. 
and they would be collecting stuff and they they needed to be out there doing the work of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Stephen uh, is, is selected and um, he preaches to the council uh, and then he becomes the first like Christian martyr in a sense uh, because it says in um, what was it uh, uh, chapter 7 and, and verse 55 but he being full of the Holy Ghost mm. looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God mm. and said, behold, I see heaven open and the son of man standing on the right hand of God. So this man died, excited Jesus so much because mm-hmm. usually when you read in scripture, Jesus is always sitting on the right hand. But this man made Jesus stand up. Mm. Lord, have mercy. Right. Can you do something so <laughs> miraculous on earth? Make, God, stand make up. Jesus stand up. Lord have mercy. Okay. So, um, but what we, what I wanted to emphasize as far as Pentecostalism is, uh, the people came together and they continued daily with, with, uh, with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house and eating a meat and what have you. And they, and it said something about, um, matter of fact, go to, go to 42, go to, uh, Acts two and 42. What does it say? Verse 42. Yeah. And they continue steadfastly uh-huh. in the apostles' doctrine yeah. and fellowship. They stayed in that one pot in the apostles' doctrine. They stayed there. They were unified even in the doctrine. They wasn't split. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of splits. We do. But they stayed in that one doctrine. Uh-huh. And fellowship. Yeah. And in breaking of bread mm-hmm. and in prayers. Breaking in bread and in prayers. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And fear came upon every soul. Everybody was afraid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Yeah. Uh-huh. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Oh, uh, is that unlike today? Very unlike today. Yeah. They all, were, they believed. Uh-huh. They were together. Together. And they had all things common. Mm-hmm. What else? And sold their possessions and goods. Sold stuff. Uh-huh. And parted them to all men. Yeah. As every man had need. Communism. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> That's what this is. It's exactly what it uh-huh. is. Keep going. And they continuing daily with uh-huh. one accord in the temple. Yeah. And breaking bread from house to house. Oh, wow. Did eat their meat with gladness mm. and singleness of heart. Yeah. Praising God. And having favor with all the people. Yeah. Y'all don't even know your neighbors today. <laughs> you sure don't. You don't know their name. You see their face. Right. Because you live next to them, but that's it. That's about mm-hmm. it. You've never been in their house. Sometimes you don't see their face. And they've never been in your house. Mm-mm. Nope. And y'all it's, walk right by each other. It's different. Yeah. You don't speak to each other. Uh-uh. You don't know each other. <sighs> the world, I don't know what happened. And mm-hmm. a lot of these are Christian homes. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Y'all don't know each other. Uh, I, I, I uh, was in a... A situation. Mm. Mm. I, 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 I want to tell it, but you know mm. I have to protect you know okay. people, so mm-hmm. I'm I'm not gonna do it. Okay. Awful, but not expedient. Yep. There you go. Just because you can't say it, I mean you you should. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so the chapter nine, Saul is converted and blinded. Mm-hmm. All right. And Saul comes on the, on the picture, and it goes on and on. Now, if you will go to chapter ten. Okay, I'm getting close to, to the to the topic here, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're we talking about the beginning of Pentecostalism because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about Azusa. We've heard about Azusa forever. Yes. All right, but I want to talk about the effects of it by going to the very beginning on what it should have done. Okay. What it should have done. Should have. All right. Chapter ten, verse one. Yeah. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. Yeah. A centurion of of the band called the Italian band. And the bad Italians. Yeah. Uh-huh. A devout man. Yeah. And one that feared God with all his house, uh-huh. which gave much alms to the people. Alms. And prayed to God always. Yeah. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. Yeah. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. Mm. Now, excuse me. And now send men to Joppa. And no! 
Now, God says, send me in the Joppa. <laughs> that word Joppa popped up in the Old Testament. Yes. Uh, that boy who got swallowed by the whale. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There's a, okay, that's another story. Go for it. And call for one Simon, uh-huh. whose surname is Peter. Simon, Simon. Mm. Uh-huh. Oh, Peter. He, he lodged with, si- with one Simon, a tanner. Okay, now here's a wonderful story here some of you have not de- delved into. Mm-hmm. Cornelius was a Gentile. Mm-hmm. All right, Simon Peter is a Jew. Mm-hmm. Okay, Jews are not supposed to touch That's right. any unclean thing. Pigs, skin, anything dead. True. A lot of y'all saying y'all like Jews, but you, you, you hang around a lot of dead stuff. Uh-oh. Uh, y'all are the, y'all are m- many of. Uh, cold but a few are frozen <laughs> okay you haven't and if y'all want to stay so true to your jewish the jewish culture and saying you don't touch any dead thing why are you having dead bodies in your churches for funerals let it go mm-hmm. i'm sorry we uh i got in trouble one time because the church of god in christ our leader is his is entombed in our in our temple in mm. memphis tennessee yes bishop c.h Bateson is entombed a dead body mm-hmm. in our church yeah yeah He's Somebody said, "Well, it's not in the sanctuary; it's in the it's in the hallway." It's well, there, everywhere you build, if I build my house, the bathroom is still my house, ain't it? That's right. Okay, I don't want to go there. Anymore. You went. I did, didn't I? You did. Yeah, the, the backyard is my house. Right. And and the, the living room is my house, ain't mm-hmm. it? So if you build God a house, ain't the hallway his house? Right. <laughs> Can you have your license, please? <laughs> yeah, but I, I have to turn <laughs> it over. All right, and I got in trouble for it. All I did was bring it up. I didn't say y'all going to hell for it. You're being damned for putting it. I didn't say that. I just said, if you're going to follow a rule, right. you follow all of it. Mm-hmm. So if you want to, you don't want to be around in a clean thing. Cause y'all seen some of the Cody preachers preach from it. Yeah. Uh, using that as an example. But you got dead bodies in your <laughs> Now I keep wondering, do Jews put dead bodies have funerals in their temples you keep wondering. ask the question mm. okay ask yourself the question mm. okay all right uh so uh, cornelius uh-huh all right uh the, the jews didn't didn't want to witness these right. these new messianic jews didn't want to witness to the gentiles they thought that the, the kingdom was for them and them only and that's right okay and then god set getting ready to set peter up set him up he said okay cornelius i'm about to bless you mm-hmm but I'm going to use somebody who's hard-headed in order mm, to do it. Mm. He already denied my son three times. Right. Okay, and then my son had to create, correct, you know, correct this mess. <laughs> said, Peter, you love me? Yeah, you know I do. Peter, yeah. you love me? Come on. You, you know I do. Peter, you love me? <laughs> 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 Ask him three times. Right. Because he denied Jesus three times. Sure did. Okay. All right. So where you stop? Mm. I stopped at verse six. Uh-huh. He lodges with one Simon a tanner. A tanner. Whose house is by the is by the seaside, he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to Peter do. Peter is a hypocrite. <laughs> okay. He's he hanging around a tanner. Ooh. That's dead skin. Dead skin. <laughs> That's L- the guy. Literally, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why how in the world are you hanging around a tanner? You a Jew. That's what I'm saying. God had to use the this this guy who was who was kind of bipolar. Yeah. All right. Mm. Keep going. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, uh-huh. he called two of his household servants yeah. and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. Yeah. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to J- Joppa. Yeah. Keep going. Now go to verse nine. On the morrow, as they went on their journey uh-huh. and drew nigh unto the city, what? Peter went up. Up on the housetop to mm-hmm. pray about the sixth hour. The sixth hour. That's noon. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And he became very hungry uh-huh. and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Uh oh. He went. To, he went to dreaming. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now he might have been. He might. It. It was more of a vision. Vision. Okay. And saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him. Yeah. As it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners yeah. and let down to the earth, uh-huh. wherein were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. Yeah. And there came a voice to him. Yeah. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Get up, kill this stuff I'm showing to you and you need to eat it. 
Mm-hmm. What Peter said. But Peter said, not so, Lord. Nope, not going to do it. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And how dare you tempt me with that stuff? <laughs> uh-huh. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. Yeah. What God hath cleansed, yeah. that call not thou common. How dare you mm-hmm. tell me what I made is unclean? Because in Genesis, he says everything I made was good. That's right. Okay. This was done thrice. Three times. Mm-hmm. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. Yeah. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision, which he had seen, should mean, mm-hmm. behold, the men which were sent from from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. Okay, let's go back. Notice it never said Peter ate it. True. Never said it. Yep, he was doubting. It was. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the uh, three times Peter saw a vision of ritual unclean animals, mm-hmm. and each time a heavenly voice insisted that he eat. And he vi- sure didn't eat. Uh huh. And violation of his Jewish conviction. Mm. Uh, so. This triple vision was intended to show Peter that God is not a respecter of persons and that he should readily accompany the strangers downstairs Mm. (laughs) to the residence of a Gentile named Cornelius. Because Peter says, God set him up. He says, listen, I'm going to give you the stuff that you're not supposed to eat. Mm -hmm. He said, that's that's unclean. Oh, so what? Here's what I need to do then. Okay. I'm telling you this. You love me. You keep my commandments. Mm-hmm. You're going to eat this. <laughs> okay. Because if I break it in now, I'm t- what he's trying to do is break him in to go and witness to an unclean person, which is called a Gentile. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. God set him up. Set him up. And he sets us up too. Mm-hmm. The, that Jonah did, uh, was supposed to go to Nineveh, I mm-hmm. think it was. Mm-hmm. Okay. But he hit over the job. You see God inserted a job in here again. Right. Come on. God is real rounded. Yes, he is. All right. Because he, he, he Ecclesiastics 1 and, and, and Ecclesiastes 3 talked about there's nothing new under the sun. Mm-hmm. What has happened? Uh, uh, y'all go there. Okay. And then uh, that boy decided he wasn't going to go and witness to those people mm-hmm. and got ate by that whale yeah. <laughs> or the big <laughs> fish. Well, y'all, we said, y'all say, well, it's a fish. And, uh, and the, 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 the fish spit him out. Mm-hmm. Then he finally went over there and did what God told him to do. Right. And then he got upset. Then he got mad. He got mad. Because... He didn't want to witness to those people. He's like <laughs> Peter. He's like, they don't belong to me. So why don't I want to witness to them? And that's what we do today. Isn't that something? We are prejudiced. That's not nice. We are prejudiced and we are bigots. Whew. We are. Hmm. A lot of us Christians are bigots. Maybe you said that on another show. I remember some other show that comes on Wednesday at 12 o'clock. <laughs> shameful. Shameful plug. Shameful plug. Shameful plug. Shameful plug. Mind, body, and soul with an ass. <laughs> she had to say the whole name. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Pentecostalism is a fair modern movement with Christianity that can be traced back to the holiness movement in the Methodist church. Mm -hmm. A major focus of Pentecostal churches is Holy Spirit baptism as evidenced by speaking in tongues. There are approximately 170 different denominations that identify themselves Mm. as Pentecostals. 170 different. Really? Something's wrong with that, ain't it? Remember you just read that they had all things in common? Yeah. That's deep. It's 5 o'clock in the Chicago land area. Uh, and uh, I'm going to hear some more Andre Crouch. He's going to proclaim this name. Jesus is Lord. This is the Sir Walter Jones Show. UrbanBroadcastMedia.com Delivering love and inspiration 24-7 This is UBM Praise The following show is paid programming and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries Thank you for listening to UBM Praise Sir Walter Jones Show with co-host Alvin Carter. We are a Christian talk show in which we tackle all the hot topics in the believer's walk. It's 
Fireside Friday. Grab a cup of coffee, sit back, relax, and be encouraged in the Lord.
gonna have to say You're gonna call his name You're gonna have to say Andre Crouch, Jesus is Lord. Wow, another hit of his. I thank God for the legacy of that man. Mm -hmm. He's a church of God in Christ, boy. Yes, he is. Father was a bishop of the church. Father died, and then the brother became the pastor, and the brother died. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, Sandra Crouch came to my pastor, Bishop Crouch Moody, and asked him for advice. Mm -hmm. My father, my pastor is a missions president of the church of god in christ worldwide and sandra called them and finally wanted to know she says i don't want to pass <laughs> <laughs> she says so we think that andre could be the one and bishop prayed for her and this and the brother and they they decided that uh, the brother uh, would be the pastor and she would be the co-pastor mm -hmm. or the assistant pastor depending on your denomination right and he lived out that life as a pastor until he died mm-hmm uh, and so thank God for the legacy. Uh, but towards the end of the 19th century, there was a dramatic rise in religion or religious fervor as the various groups anticipated the end of history and the return of Christ in 1900. Mm. Now, I think the people who had all things in common in Acts, they felt that the Lord Jesus Christ was going to come in their time. Yes. It's one reason why they had all things in common. Mm -hmm. They began to sell things and what have you. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't talk about that. Right. But they felt that he was coming in their day, which now today over the past, gosh, I don't know how many, uh, maybe over a hundred some years, mm -hmm. men still believe in their day that Christ is coming. Right. Every generation believes that he's coming in their time. Right. And we don't know when he's coming. Don't know. But his generation say, well, before I die, he, the rapture is going to happen. But we have to still keep looking for it. Yes. Because once we get, take our minds off of that, it may not happen. We, we become what's called scoffers in scripture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's another story. Um, That's good, though. Much of this fervor was driven by the revival meetings held by those in the holiness movement. And there were occasional reports of people speaking in tongues. The first widespread use of tongues was at the revival of Topeka, Topeka, Kansas. In uh, January 1900. So we hear about Zusa, but we don't talk about the Topeka one, led by Charles Parham, Agnes Osman, not, not of the Osman brothers, uh, mm -hmm. a Methodist, uh, began to speak in tongues. Somebody said Methodists don't speak in tongues. Well, you, we just told you. Uh, and others <laughs> in the meeting uh, eventually followed suit. In 1906, a series of revival meetings on Azusa Street in, uh, in Los Angeles led to a widespread experience of tongue speaking, as you heard in the audio at the very beginning of our show, which spread to many parts of the country. The meetings were led by William Seymour, one of uh, Charles Parham's students. Parham and Seymour eventually parted ways because Parham believed many of the manifestations of Azusa Street were of the, f of the flesh. Or perhaps even demonic. Mm. Yeah, that's what Parham believed. Uh, and today, some of y'all are in the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen people violently shaking church and what have you. Right. That wasn't God. That wasn't God. The folk was falling over and hurting themselves. Uh oh. God is <laughs> 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 stepping on folks' toes, people bleeding after they jumped up and down. That ain't God. He said bleeding. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's unruly. That's flesh. That is. Yeah, they know they know. the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. Uh, yes. By 1909, Seymour had ex excluded all but African Americans from holding office in the mission, and the ministry and the ministry eventually faded into history. Mm -hmm. Through the Azusa Street uh, mission, uh, had brief life. Its impact on the Pentecostal movement has been a uh, an lasting one. Many new churches and missions were founded across America which carried the new emphasis on seeking the baptism of the spirit as evidenced by speaking in tongues. Today, there are over 200 million denominational Pentecost and, uh, other, and another 200 million who identify themselves as Pentecostal or charismatic in mainline churches. That's a lot of people. 
I think Catholics make up about a billion. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so we're second to Catholicism. Uh, there are there are three main divisions with the uh, with the within the Pentecostal movement. The original group, which came out of the Holiness Church uh, or Methodist and Nazarene, uh, sees three progressive steps in the life of believer, which indicate growth and blessings. The first step is justification. And if you read some of you guys uh, statement of faith, you'll see the word justification, which is the forgiveness of sins that comes from uh, putting faith in Christ Jesus. The second step is sanctification. Okay. Y- are y'all listening to class? Yes. The first step in Pentecostal belief is justification mm-hmm. and then sanctification or the second blessing, which was first taught by John Wesley in, in his, uh, a, 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 we call it a plain account of Christian perfection in 1766. The, the essence of this doctrine is an inner purity of heart and, and an infusion of power whereby the believer no longer practice sin. You got that? Okay. No longer practices. All right. (laughs) I hear crickets. (laughs) This is sometimes followed by the third step, the baptism of the spirit as evidenced by speaking in tongues or other signs. The church of God in Christ and the church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee are two major denominations in this group. All right. Okay. Okay. The second division is comprised of those who came out of the Baptist background, Mm -hmm. Mm. but were heavily influenced by the holiness revivals in the late 1800s. Then came the Assemblies of God. They were founded in 1914 under the leadership of uh, Eudorus N. Bell, who had been a Southern Baptist pastor. The key differences in doctrine for this group is that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is is available for everyone, regardless of of attaining sanctification. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, mm. that's that's what they believe. Okay, and the assemblies of God come out of the Church of God in Christ. Yes, they were with us, mm-hmm. and then they split. Mm-hmm. A lot of it was because of the Jim Crow laws of that time. Right, and our pastor, our bishop uh, C. H. Mason, the founder of our church, uh, was the one with the license. He was the one that was able to license these white ministers. He sure was, and they had to come to him for license. Sure did, but then they couldn't sit with him in church. <laughs> that's something. Yeah, and so they split out of us. And Where did uh, you do that at? Huh? Well, well, in that time, they had to do it. Right. So the third division is the oneness Pentecostals at the beginning, which formed the Church of God in Christ. 1914, there was intense debate over Trinitarian doctrine, mm. while the majority of uh, holiness believers held to the tradition belief in the Trinity. There was a growing group which held to a m- model list or a model, you know, the mm-hmm. model list or mode. OK, a model list belief. And affirm that baptism should be done in Jesus' name only. Mm. Another tenet of this group is this, uh, the necessary of speaking in tongues as evidence of salvation. This group uh, was to form the United Pentecostal Church and the Apostolic Pentecostal Church, among others. Mm-hmm. Now, I was baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, okay, mm-hmm. when I was young. What about you? What were you? The same. Huh? The same. Okay. Father, yeah. Father, Son, and Holy mm-hmm. Ghost. And then when I got older... I went down in Jesus' name. That's because you're different. I am different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. No, but I've heard your testimony about that before. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, went down in Jesus' name. Not because I thought I had to have it or I couldn't make it into heaven. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. I think they, yeah, because uh, Peter took, uh, not Peter, the Apostle Paul took Timothy to do his evangelistic work with, with, with Paul. Mm-hmm. But uh, Timothy, the only problem was he was the, uh, the son of a Jewish mother mm-hmm. and grandmother, Eunice and Lois, I believe their names were. Mm-hmm. Father wasn't Jew. Right. I think mean, he was he was Greek or Roman. Okay. Yeah. So the, he couldn't bring Timothy into the temples to okay. minister. Right. They didn't allow him. Right. So what what Peter what Paul say? He had to make he had to get him circumcised. Mm-hmm. After he got circumcised, they're like, Oh hey, come right. on in, boy. <laughs> yeah. I was not received into many of the apostolic churches because I was not baptized in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. I couldn't play the organs. Mm-hmm. They won't let me play the piano. I couldn't sit in the pulpit. No, wouldn't that. let me do it. Nope, nope, nope. I was a renegade. <laughs> I went down in Jesus' name because mm-hmm. God told me to. Okay. And when I did that, they received me. Mm-hmm. And I was able to minister into their churches and play their organs and pianos and teach, train their choirs, what have you, because I wanted to have all things common with them. 
and I didn't want to fight over baptism when they wanted to have me do a work for the Lord. I didn't want to be fighting over that. Question. Yeah. So when you ministered, what did you minister? Did you minister in their doctrine or were mm. you? I, I read it right out of scripture. See, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm of the church of God in Christ, but when people ask me, you know, my denomination, I, I change the subject. I'm not a denominational preacher. Mm-hmm. I preach right out of the word of God. Okay. And sometimes the word of God go against my denomination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it was, I was just curious, you know, um, cause it's, um, I know it didn't matter that you went down in Jesus name. It didn't say, you know, whether or not you were saved or not or anything, but you, then I, I just wondered after you did go down in Jesus name, mm-hmm. how did, how were you able to minister to them? So, I mean, you're saying you came straight out of the word. Okay. I can, I can accept that. That was the most important thing to them. Okay. Then anything was that right. and they received me, whatever I said, because of, mm-hmm. because of that one thing. Okay. And again, the Lord had me to do it because the Lord had Paul to do that for Timothy. He had to give him a second. He says, Paul said, he said, I am all things, uh, to all men, all men so that I might win some. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so I had to be all things to them so that some of them I win. Well, some of them I won't, I won't win, but I had to do it. Uh, and it, 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 it did, it, it helped me. Mm-hmm. It really did. Now, let me tell you something. I, I don't have a problem with those who baptize in Jesus name because the new Testament, uh, the, these, these men baptize these people in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. So what's the, what's the problem? Mm-hmm. And I understand what the apostolics are saying. Their defense is father, son, and Holy ghost is not a name. Father is a title. Son is a title. Not a name. Mm-hmm. So if you if you baptize a person in Jesus, mm-hmm. son is not the name. Jesus is the name. Mm-hmm. That's their defense. Okay. Y'all can fight with it all you want to, but I went down everybody's name. <laughs> you sure did. <laughs> sure did. I got everybody Father, now. Son, Holy Ghost, and Jesus. Yep, I got it all. I'm covered. You covered. <laughs> <laughs> Again, good way to look at it. Yeah, and I have apostolic friends who listen to this show. Mm-hmm. We get, we agree to disagree agreeably. Okay. And we, we go on and hold hands, sing Kumbaya, because we find something that we believe in, and we and then we, we do spiritual warfare together. That's good. Okay, because we shouldn't be divided like this over some ordinance of the church. Mm-hmm. All right? Because they drink real wine. A lot, some of my apostolic friends, they okay. drink real wine for communion. Mm-hmm. We don't. Right. So now we're saying they sin. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> right. But we sin because we didn't go down to Jesus' name. You see how this this. Pentecostal yes. stuff is all mixed up sometimes. It is. We're fighting each other while the world is suffering outside our church doors. That's true. It's it's ridiculous to me. It's absolutely ridiculous. So they'll say, no, that's in scripture. You got to do it this way. You can, the other stuff, yeah, that's man made. Yeah. Well, again, uh, so <laughs> what <laughs> what are we to make of this movement? The er, the early holiness believers recognize that Christianity ought to result in visible changes in the in the person's life. The focus of many early prayer meetings was to throw off everything that hinders and the sin that easily entangles us. Hebrew 12 and 1. Mm-hmm. These earnest believers wanted to run their race faithfully and were seeking God's help to do so. As that earnestness gave, gave way to emotional religious fervor, doctrines were developed to explain and support the emotions of experiences. That's why we have so many denominations. A lot of it is sensationalism. Uh, many, many people, uh, for, for, for many today, the emphasis is on the excitement for, uh, or the experience or the new word of prophecy. Because everybody wants a new prophetic word today. The word of God is, is, is finished. That's we, right. We got a lot of it here. But y'all, every day you wake up wanting, can a prophet come to my house and talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> but you won't read the Bible. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Uh, some of the questionable foundations lay, laid by John Wesley, of, of example, a second blessing of perfection, paved the way for later Pentecostal doctrines of new works of the Spirit. Some Pentecostals allow experience to trump scriptural teaching an attempt to conform scripture to what they know by experience. Mm-hmm. But fervor, fervent experience, even when it involves miracles, is not the test of true faith. Matthew 7 and 22. So I don't, everybody who testify and they get y'all excited don't mean that that was of God. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. If it goes against scripture, that ain't of God. Right. So God's not caught up on testimonies. Mm-hmm. And I know they said, well, they overcame him by the word of God, by the, by your testimony. And the blood of the lamb. Well, that's a revelation, which is to come. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. We can't be using that scripture out of context. Uh, he wasn't talking about church testifying. Right. Okay. 
but y'all still should need to testify. That's right. It helps the people that there. That's right. And their faith. Mm-hmm. And they're struggling with what they have to you. witness to them. Right, right. But we don't know how to testify. That's why they cut testimony service out of church. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. They cut it out. Testimony. And they put their, let's put some praise and worship up there and get them testimony out of there. Because folks <laughs> folk testify about something that happened 90 years ago. Oh, Lord Jesus. Nothing happened to them. Uh, God has not, not, not moved them in the last seven days mm-hmm. or seven months. Or they get them thrown off on other folks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's not a testimony. Y'all can't testify. Peter affirmed the value of scripture over experience when he said, we also have a more sure word of prophecy to which you do well to take heed as to a light that centers in the dark place. Second Peter 1, 19. So there's a lot of churches out there with mentioned the, the symptoms of God. And they all, again, we can go do a show on all of the beliefs of these, these churches, the four square gospel, the full gospel, we mentioned the apostolic church and there's a lot of them, mm-hmm. you know, and we could, again, we could talk about it until the cows come home mm. and I don't, I don't want the cows to come home because no. I don't got no cows. Uh, <laughs> Noble Hetley, 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 Noble Hetley. If the album was here, they'll say Hetley Lamar. Uh, he, uh, she says, uh, uh let's see. In part, Parham was a racist. Yes. That's what I heard. Seymour had to learn through an open window because as a black man, he wasn't allowed inside. That's right. He stood wow. outside and Parham kept the door open when they were on one accord okay. and was able to preach the, the gospel and he was able to hear it. That's something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then um, and you you saw what I mentioned earlier about they locked the doors on him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Said, no, nah, can't, can't let him in here. He's preaching something. That right. We, we're not, we're not, you know. You have any questions? Class, get any questions? <laughs> no. Mm, you're good. <laughs> I'm good. Okay. No, I've I've heard that before though what? about um, um them not letting him in. Oh, and have okay. And listen to the to the word outside of uh. Okay. The church. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there are there's a, a lasting a, very, a lasting legacy that happened in, uh, with the Azusa Street. You know the the message. The movement, you got G.B. Cashwell, William Durham. These are white ministers. A.H. Argu, John Lake, T.B. and Laura Barrett, Daniel Berg, uh, Gunnar Vingren, Luigi France, uh, Francis, Francison, <laughs> Ivan Vonajev. I mean, it, it goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. But the lasting legacy, perhaps the most important legacy of Azusa Street was the, the renewed of the charismatic movement. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, very important. Pentecostals were the first Christians since the early church to associate speaking in tongues with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. Uh, before 1901, thousands of people in holiness and Catholic groups had claimed a baptism in the Holy Spirit with various evidence to validate their experience. Okay, uh, if you can go to uh, mm, man, what's uh, Gal- Galatians five? I think it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the people in the world did. <laughs> Galatians five and what? Uh, I want to uh, go to the uh, fruit of the spirit. Was it twenty two? Twenty. Yeah, we'll re- find it and we'll read it later. Um, then you had rec- racial reconciliation. The most striking and unusual feature of the Zuzu Street meetings was the racial harmony that prevailed under the leadership of Seymour. Uh, and we talked about that a little earlier. Um, now it says this is led by Bartleman to say Bartleman, okay. Bartleman is the is the man's name. I heard in my dream. I was just looking at you like, oh my mm-hmm. goodness, that was the name. Now what did you just say about him now? Uh, this um, the 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 racial the, uh, the 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 movement began among whites in Topeka, and then we had blacks to come in, and, and there was a racial harmony, and this was led by Bartleman. The racial harmony was led by Bartleman. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. Uh, yeah, the color says, he said the color line was washed away in the blood. And many people were amazed. Mm. Yeah. At, at a most racial time at the time. And then there were women in ministry. The Azusa Street Revival also brought women's ministry to the forefront. One of the most influential ladies at Azusa Street was Jeannie Evans Moore, yes. who, who married William Seymour mm-hmm. in 1908. She served faithfully. At his side during the great revival days uh, and often filled uh, the pulpit. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Filled the pulpit while her husband was away. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the poor historians and uh, sociologists 
now view the Azusa Street meetings as essential a third world phenomenon. In a way, Seymour represented the poor, disadvantaged, and disinherited people of the world. Uh, since about 80% of the world population falls into the category today, Azusa Street symbolizes God's love for the many people who have little of the world's goods or esteem. Some have spoken of Pentecostalism as, a, as having of the masses or as the haven of the masses. Others have said Pentecostalism is a religion of choice for the third world, mm -hmm. for the third world. Mm -hmm. That's, this is what Pentecostalism is supposed to do. Okay. Music, a far reaching and rarely noticed legacy of Azusa Street is the new style of worship music that ultimately spread around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the woman sat at the piano, never touched the piano before. And the Holy Spirit came. And while the people were speaking in the unknown tongues, the woman began to play the piano skillfully because God had moved on her. Mm -hmm. to do that uh this all happened in azusa since azusa this happened to andre crouch as well okay. his father prayed for him and and, and told him go sit at the piano and the lord uh that overtook the gift mm -hmm. uh and he began to play that's what happened to pastor adams too you know that, yeah right? yeah heard that testimony mm -hmm. oh absolutely uh let's see um, since Azusa Street was a mixture of both white and black, uh, holding his worship styles, it was it was inevitably inevitable that the music ethos of black Pentecostals would have increased influence among Pentecostals. Mm -hmm. Even though Azusa Street worshipers sang the old Methodist and holiness hymns, such as the Azusa's favorite, "The Comforter Has Come," yes, the black music ethos gradually spread and ultimately influenced the white churches. And today. We have that. Y'all mm -hmm. gonna call me, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What what time is that? We gonna call mm -hmm. after the break. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, evangelism, perhaps the most far-reaching legacy of Azusa Street, is the teaching of the practice of the Holy Spirit, empowered in that. We know, all know. You know, we all know about evangelism. What happened there? We thank God for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a lot went on. The Church of God in Christ was birthed out of it. Well, not necessarily birthed out of Azusa Street, mm -hmm. but you know. Y'all know the history. The Church of God in Christ is a historical African-American holiness uh, Pentecostal church. I'm a part of it. I'm a proud member of it. Yes. Um, do I agree with everything? No. Because no. you, you don't agree with everything in no. your, your denominations. Trust me, you don't. The church has a congregation in nearly 60 countries. We, we got 61, 62 countries. And my pastor, Bishop, Mich, uh, I'm about to say Bishop Mason, mm -hmm. Bishop Moody, is a president. Mm -hmm. And he's traveled to all these countries. Okay. Uh, with a membership of over 5 million in 2007. Ooh, of course, yes. we have many more after that. Yeah, we're almost at an 8 now. but I think we have 6 or 7. Uh, it is the largest African-American and largest Pentecostal church in the United States. Mm. Okay, Church of God in Christ was formed in 1897. So, you know, that was before the Zuzu Street. Right. Okay, by a group of Baptists. So we come out of the Baptists. Mm -hmm. So Art the Baptist, who comes on our show all the time, he, he, he's our, he's he's right. our father. <laughs> <laughs> Most notable, Charles Price oh, Jones. C.P. Jones and Charles Harrison Mason, who broke fellowship with the Baptists over the doctors of holiness. Mm -hmm. You know, Baptists ain't holy. Masons became... <laughs> <laughs> Mason became associated with a group of men who would become the early African American leaders of the holiness movement in the late 19th century. Mm -hmm. And the history, the, it goes on and on and on. And I'm going to do a show on the Church of God in Christ. Okay. An entire show. Kind of help y'all understand what's going on with that. All right. But um, I, I, I got something very interesting that I want to bring out after this break. It's called the Lateran Movement, mm. which, if you look at our theme, I mean, our a symbol that our. We call that thing there the seal. The seal. The you seal. see the seal with the rain coming down, and there's a, a sheaf there uh, that, that's been knitted together, and what have you. That resembles a ladder, ladder rain. Um, it is, con it is indeed, it is considered a heresy, actually, <laughs> by the Assemblies of God, and I'll try to explain why if I get some time after the break. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, Andre Krause, you've been doing fine. Why don't you continue? He says, "Well, this is one of my favorite songs of his." Mm -hmm. Always remember ah. Jesus. Jesus. We'll be right back. So what's John Shop? Log on to urbanbroadcastmedia.com and check out the many services Urban Broadcast Media provides. Whether it's social media, video production, radio broadcasting, or audio recording, we got you covered. The following show is paid programming and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Praise.
Hey buddy, sorry. There's a glitch in the system. Should we just lost just lost power? <laughs> Always keep him on your mind. Here okay. You Alright, for the figures, finish that. Devil's in the detail. He don't want he didn't want y'all to hear that song. That's right. Go on YouTube and you'll find it. Remember Jesus. Always remember Jesus. Alright. I think I got a phone caller on on the phone. Call now. Yeah, well, I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> caller! Okay, well, let me know when they call back. There are historical uh, historic revivals that happened down through the years. The Second Awakening in 1792, the Third Awakening in 1830, the Fourth Great Awakening in 1857, the Fifth mm-hmm. Great Awakening in 1880. Then you had the Welsh Revival in 1906, mm-hmm. which coincided with the uh, Azusa Street Revival, okay. the, both same year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then you had all these other ones. You got Brian, you got uh, the the Amherst College Revival, the Argentinian Revival, the Asbury Revival, nineteen seventy, campus revivals. Uh, you got Browns Brownsville, I think it's called mm-hmm. Browns Browns or Brownsville, something. In, I think it's in Florida. Then you had a revival that broke out in um, uh, what's that, Darling Czech area over there, um, over there in Europe, uh, over there in. Uh, down in the land down under Australia and yeah something happened down there and they, there's just revivals that are just popping up and people are saying that they're and right before Christ comes there'll be a great worldwide revival that happens well it's not in scripture these are just some prophetic things that popped up and you know we need to talk about that because okay. you guys are uh, giving things and giving information out that hmm they're questionable mm-hmm. because um the Martin Luther King gave a great speech mm-hmm. uh, on the March on Washington. Yes. And his speech had a great impact all these years later. Mm-hmm. All right. Yes. It is, it is to me the probably the second greatest speech ever mm-hmm. known to man mm-hmm. outside of, of anything Christ might have said. Right. All right. Uh, and the reason why I'm calling it the second greatest, because there's probably a, a one, a first greatest I just don't know what it is. <laughs> so I'm just giving it a benefit of the doubt. Okay. Probably Abraham Lincoln probably had the better speeches of all men. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Abraham, I mean, so Martin Luther King gave the great speech. It had an impact afterwards. Mm-hmm. President Obama gave a speech, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. Uh, last week when he spoke on, uh, he was on that bridge, mm-hmm. the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Mm-hmm. And we were celebrating 50 years of the Selma March. Yes. And the beating. The greatest speech he has ever given probably the greatest speech that I've heard since JFK. Mm-hmm. All right. He inserted some homosexual in, in, uh, in tone in there, mm-hmm. which unfortunately kind of killed some things for me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it killed some things because, you know, I'm not sure how homosexuality is part of the human right. That's a, that's a sexual, that's, yeah. that's a sexual preference. It's not a human right. Exactly. Uh, outside of that, it was a great speech, mm-hmm. but you guys will forget it. You've, you've, we've already forgot it. Yes. Okay. So the great speeches are the ones that made an impact. Yes. After years after it. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so, oh, I, my caller. Okay. Well, I was, yeah, I was my kinda, brother in broadcasting. Yeah. But this sir thing. Uh-oh. I never asked him. How did he get that? So on the phone with me right now is Sir Walter Jones. Sir, first of all, hey. Walter, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Man, I'm pissed. 
How you, did you get sir in front of your name? <laughs> oh, my Lord. So I'm talking to you. You on the air? Yes. And, and you talking to me and I'm on the air? Okay, I can't say piss. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, okay. This is you being praised. I'll take, I'll take it back. I meant, oh. I, I, I meant um, I'm highly in uh, your nation. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'll, I'll accept right. The, the scientific statement. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes, sir. Now, please explain to me. Sure. Who knighted you? That's a good question. You, oh yeah, because 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 I, I feel left out. You <laughs> what you? Uh, now, for those of you who are listening to you being praised, this is Chris Bates, who lives upstairs in a, in the attic of the uh, Urban Broadcast the Media attic? House. <laughs> he's he's in the. Oh, what, 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 what am I psycho? I'm, 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 you know, I'm mother now. Right. He got kids and they're under the stairs. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the great Chris Bates. Uh, and uh, he's on the UBN Talk, and he's, uh, so the, the, this is great, though. This is the first time we've ever done a simulcast type thing. We've Absolutely. been trying to do this for a long time. That's awesome. That's yeah, great. this is great. So we finally got it working thanks to somebody up there, the Dion or the gods. I don't yeah, know who yeah, did Dion, yeah. Okay, well, who, Zeus or whoever it was. Who, who, right, and Dion, who <laughs> is really the outside child of Ashford and Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way he, he said outside he child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the name, the name, sir. Actually, I didn't give myself that name. Uh, and and, I, was, I was worried about you. Sir. Yeah, I, you know, I don't like people who call themselves these names because they just want to be known in, in in the world for something great, and then they turn out right. to be poor uh, and nobody know them. And all, but they give themselves that name because you know, it's like some of right. the churches we have in the, in the neighborhood. They say world world outreach, but nobody got a passport in that church. Right. Okay, exactly. no bread basket, no nothing. The the people in the neighborhood don't even know who you are, but your name is worldwide, <laughs> you know, <laughs> international house of prayer. Okay, you don't even know how to pray. So this is house of prayer. Uh, so the uh, the names people give themselves, you know, I, the queen of gospel, oh, no, the queen of, of soul is Aretha Franklin. She's deserving of that name. Yes, she is. Okay, someone gave it to her. And now, right. who gave you "Sir" as in Sir Walter Jones? Well, I was I'm a, I'm a uh, music producer slash musician songwriter, and the people in the '90s who I would hang around in, I'm in the studio, I'm in the in the in the churches and what have you, and they would say, "Walter, you're more than a Walter, you're more like a Sir." And so <laughs> the name "Sir" uh, people started using it for me, but I didn't like it. I I mean, I thought it was cute, but I never used it. Uh, and her name was Trisha Baker. She was the first one to use that name in the, in the, okay. in the late nineties. And then, uh, people start, start hearing her say it, uh, in my other circles and they started saying it. And so I still didn't use it. And, and then it had been forgotten about it. I've been forgotten about. It. And then in 2003, it rehashed. I moved out of town and, and to a little town uh, called Rapid City, uh, South Dakota. All right. Okay. And, I started working for a high school there, a Catholic high school. I was a teacher. I was a music teacher there. And somebody said, sir. And the whole class, all of the kids in that school and the whole, that whole, um, uh, the, what do what you call it, the diocese, they all started calling me sir. And the kids thought that my first name was sir because they would say Mr. Walters because <laughs> they didn't want to call me by all my right. first name. You see what I'm saying? Right. So yeah. Sir Walter became, so I said, Walter, you might as well use it. And so I started using it as a stage name, as a professional name, as whatever. So now people, again, they think that my first name is Sir. Uh, well, you and, know what? That's a wonderful story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and no, no, I like it. You know, it kind of reminds, it's kind of reminiscent of like the old Sidney Portier movie, To Sir With Love. Yeah. Yeah. And on those lines, right. Absolutely. Now, I'm glad you cleared the air because uh -huh. I thought it was like a self uh, a self proclaim thing. Because I had you pictured in your kitchen one day. <laughs> getting a butter knife. Right. And then getting on one knee. Uh, 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 knife. Sir <laughs> and then you dump yourself on both shoulders with a butter knife. <laughs> and then you get back up and you're Sir Walter Jones. I'm glad you cleared the air for I had to. Man. I, I had thought to. it was on. I thought, for example, like, you know, Annette Harris, who's there with you. Right. I thought you changed her name to like Ma'am Harris. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am Harris. Uh, Ma'am Harris. You know. <laughs> no, no. Uh, and, you know, the kids, the kids, now I let them have that because they'll say, 
wow, Mr. Walters, uh, you went <laughs> over there and got knighted by the queen. That is so <laughs> awesome. That's so awesome. You know, and these are, these are white kids. They were just such full of innocence, you know, and I, I let them have it. I never corrected them. And we're I would say, those, we're, we're gonna let those poor white children. Oh no, they were wealthy. They were poor. <laughs> I'll put like this: You gonna let them believe that funky tale? <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Yep. And, oh, okay. Uh -huh. right. And many of them are my Facebook friends to this day. They'll say, "Wow, my teacher back in the day got knighted by the queen," and I just ignore it. I don't correct them. <laughs> oh, I should let wow. them have it. They need that now, moment. Boy, I see there. Now, now you mean knighted by Queen Elizabeth, not knighted by uh, Aretha Franklin? No, no, not knighted. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say Aretha Franklin? <laughs> Aretha Franklin. <laughs> Aretha Franklin. <laughs> Aretha Franklin. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, and that's the story, that's, and I'm sticking well, to it. Well, it's a good story. No, I appreciate that. Cause I told yeah. you, man, I thought it was self grandizing. You know, oh, oh, uh -huh. you're in the kitchen with a butter knife. <laughs> dollar, you know, so I'm glad that I go with your story more than the one I had. Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man's, man's, uh, man's is believable. Believe it. Yes, yes. it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, mine's believable, too. Now, some oh. people have done that. I, mean, I don't know who they are exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I want to be, uh, uh, sir, uh, uh, chicken food, <laughs> you know, they, and yeah. they'll get the butter knife and they'll, dot, you know, they dub themselves and keep on fast. right and keep it stepping. You know, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, now we, you, we have to call the um little white truck uh, when this happens, but you the know, little, <laughs> the little, white, truck <laughs> little white truck with the right. with the white suit they come out of the truck with oh the white suit. Gosh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, it, it has it's no arms. Tailor made. It's tailor made. Tailor made. Doc, arms in it. what one size fits all, Doc. <laughs> 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 Great stuff. Oh, man. We got to do this more often, I, man. Yes, sir. We have to. We have to do the cross name because I, yeah. I told you before, um, I'm glad I have you in my life, man. You've been very um, supportive of me while I'm going through right now. And I'm having some fun with you, but you were heavy in my mind. Wow. And I love you, brother. And keep up the great work you're doing. Wow. Wow. That's beautiful. That, now, that's awesome. I, I'm going to have to take back all the things I said uh, well, all this week. Don't take it back. It's too late now. Okay. <laughs> 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 all those things I said. If we we um we want to thank you uh for being the dear brother of this house. And mm -hmm. those of you who don't know, this is a, this is really it's a house. It's a it literally is. a house. It is. And um um our, our dear brother lost his wife uh, the other day, and um, we fun they were we funeralized her, uh, and um it was it was hard felt mm -hmm. to see the people come on the mic. Yes. Back to back to back. It was to speak of her life. Mm -hmm. And and this this young man and uh, I I just couldn't take it anymore, so I I had to come to the mic and let them know that this uh, Chris Bass is our resident heathen. <laughs> and, uh, tell the truth. I tell the truth. We were yeah. we were gonna, we were having a wonderful <laughs> and you gonna bring up, up my mm -hmm. my days of being uh, having three six six on the back of my head. <laughs> oh, is that what that is? That's what it is. That's what it is. When he laying down, it's a, it's a three nines. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 he's got a bipolar situation going on. Right. Uh, yeah, depending on how you look at him. But, uh, right. yeah, we, we love him. And uh, I'm telling you, this house is not a home without Chris Bates uh, mm -hmm. around. And um, we, we, we really thank God for him. You, you know, we, we want to have him around as much as we can uh, because who else we going to pick on? That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. Yeah. I, I, I take it with a badge of honor, and I, and I yeah. love you guys more, and uh, thank you for everything. And I'll see you guys, of course, after the show. Okay. I, I'm glad we did this crossover. Me too. And we got to work on doing more of them because I told you before this ever happened that you and I need to do some specials together. Yes. I'm looking forward to that. That'd that would be, be nice. that, that would be great. And we will have uh, that button that you press. Is it beep? Yeah. We'll have a beep button. Okay. I'll just replace the word, so I won't say that word. I'll say <laughs> urination and stuff like okay. that. I'll give the scientific <laughs> that, Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah, we, we like science. Okay. We like science. And right. And, and I won't use like an H-O. I'll just mm -hmm. use a biblical term, which I love better. Yeah. I'll say whore. Ho okay, whore is so fine. Or, or harlot. <laughs> one of the two. Oh, harlot. Is, that's, that's a good that, one. That's a good one. Harlot. More. Yeah, yeah. Use harlot. I'm not use sure harlot. how this is going to yeah, work, Oh Yeah, we'll pray, pray, pray our strength in the Lord, y'all. Okay. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Love you, Chris. All right, sir. All right, Doc. Love Thanks, you, Chris. Man. Love you more. I'll talk to you soon. Take okay. Care. See ya. That was a great Chris bass from upstairs <laughs> in the attic. What you call from upstairs? Yeah, free upstairs. Free <laughs> upstairs. On the UBM Talk, we have three stations here at uh, Urban Broadcast Media. We thank God for uh, Dr. Leon Finney, who created this monster for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have UBM Talk, we have UBM Jams, and UBM Praise. 
uh, and I'm on every day, and Chris Bass is on every day. I think yes. we, we might be the only ones that are on every day, mm -hmm. okay? And everybody else comes on once a week. You come on at Wednesdays at 12 Wednesdays. noon uh, mm -hmm. uh, Central, and, and so many other shows are here on the station. Come visit us, 4108, I think it is. Yes. South uh, King Drive. King Drive, right here in the Bronzeville area, wonderful historic uh, neighborhood. Beautiful. Now that I told y'all where I am, uh -oh. I'm going to have to keep this door locked. <clears throat> um, <laughs> so coming for you. the... Uh, the latter, the latter rain movement. That's uh, before I was really interrupted. The, <laughs> <laughs> the, the 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 Church of God in Christ uh, and the Assemblies of God and others uh, launched off this what's called the latter latter rain movement. Now listen very closely to this because um, uh, you notice that the Church of God in Christ don't use this that much. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that they don't agree with it still, but they don't use latter rain movement. Mm -hmm. A ladder rain. Okay. They even had a song, send down the rain, send mm -hmm. down the ladder rain. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need the rain. The ladder rain movement is an, is, is an influence. Oh, you going to finish it? I did. Sorry. The ladder rain movement is an influence within Pentecostalism, which teaches that the Lord is pouring out his spirit again, mm -hmm. as he did at Pentecost. Right. And using believers to prepare the world for his second coming. The ladder rain movement is an anti-dispensational -dispens and amillennial. And many leaders of the movement embrace apparent teachings. And this is an article I'm reading. This is not Sir Walter. This okay. is an article I'm reading. Okay. Is you can agree with the article or not? I put, I put these out on the table. And you guys decide. All right. Good. Uh, the term latter rain was first used early in the, in the history of Pentecostalism. When David Wesley Milan wrote a book called Latter Rain Songs in 1907. Three years later, Milan wrote The Latter Rain Covenant, a defense of Pentecostalism in general. The name comes from Joel 2.23. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Pentecostals interpret the rain in this verse as the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The latter rain or the end times outpouring would be greater than the former rain. Right. Right. So the, I said earlier in the show that they, a lot of prophets and a lot of us, us uh, teachers believe that there's going to be a great um, revival mm -hmm. and the spirit going to work greatly right before the end comes. Yes. And they thought that's what happened in Zusa. Street, right. which a great thing did happen there. Mm -hmm. And without it, we wouldn't have as many possibly charismatic believers as we do today. Maybe, maybe not, but, but a lot of uh, a lot of things happened there. It did. And the Holy Spirit happened and people were speaking in tongue at that time because they did, God needed to work again mm -hmm. there. Uh, and so um, I, I agree with, with it. Uh, I do also believe that uh, some of the some of the things that happened in the past were over romanticized. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, I'll have to explain what I mean by that a little later. Okay. Uh, in 1948, a revival broke out in uh, Saskatchewan, Canada, and teachings of the Latter Rain Movement were clarified. These involved uh, in the revival were convinced that they were on the verge of a new era, one in which the Holy Spirit would demonstrate his power in a greater way than the world had ever seen. Mm -hmm. Not even the age of the apostles, they said, would witness such a movement of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Okay, you see why it's getting kind of tough. Mm -hmm. Latter rain teaching is characterized by a highly typological or typo yeah, typological hermeneutic. That is, the Bible is interpreted in a symbolic, extremely stylized manner. An emphasis is placed on extra biblical revelation such as the personal prophecies, experiences, and direct and directives straight from God. Latter Rain's doctrine includes the following beliefs. Now listen very closely to these beliefs, and some of these are in your pamphlets and your denominations. Okay. The first one is, the gifts of the Spirit, includes tongues, are received through the laying on of hands. Mm -hmm. So, I don't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. I wish I see it, though. Yeah. But, you, but y'all form at, at, at the altar. You spit... And, and there's somebody spitting in your face saying, G -g 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 okay, on, that's up. the okay. Now, some of them people did receive, mm -hmm. uh, but is it does this was this the proper practice? Because, uh, notice in uh, Cornelius' house, what we read earlier, they Peter, while he was yet talking, mm -hmm. they all received the Holy that's Ghost, right. and then in one case, uh, uh, Paul laid hands on the person, they he said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Right, and he laid hands, and bam, they spoke. So these things can happen. The second one is Christians can be demonized and require deliverance. It says Christians can mm. be demonized and require deliverance. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
Uh, this, then the second one, the third one says, God has restored all the offices of ministry to the church, including apostles and prophets. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. Now, there's some people says yes, and some people say no. There are no new day apostles. There are no new day prophets. That's what the the fight is all about. Okay. The fivefold ministry. Mm-hmm. So some says God got rid of the apostles and prophets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we can do a show on that. <laughs> I'm just reading an article. I ain't agreeing or disagreeing with nothing right. just yet. Right. The next one is divine healing can be administered through the laying on of hands. Mm-hmm. So there's been people who, you know, they got called up to the the line, the the uh, the altar, and uh, lay hands on them and you're healed. Right. Unfortunately, it's not happening that much. Okay. Got to ask. Got to find out why. The next one is praise and worship will usher God into you in our presence. Praise and worship will usher God in our presence. Okay. Praise and worship. True. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Women have a full and equal ministry role in the church. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. Next one: denominational lines will be destroyed, over that one, and the church will unify uh, in the last days. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. The latter rain will bring God's work to completion. The church will be victorious over the world and usher in Christ's kingdom. Uh oh again. Uh oh. Many apostles in the Latin Rain movement also teach the doctrine of the manifest manifest sons of God. This is a heretical doctrine which says that the church will give rise to special groups of overcomers who will receive spiritual bodies becoming immortal. It goes on and on and on, y'all. And today uh, actually the apostolic uh the, the sins of God calls it here heresy. They they got rid of it. They said no more, we can't do this. Mm-hmm. Church of God in Christ still holds holds to it. But they don't talk about it, and we probably need to ask some of the bishops what do they believe because we haven't heard anything. Right. I got to get out of here, y'all. I want to hear, um, let the church say, man, huh? I want to do? Okay. Yeah. Well, let me finish reading this last, this last um, paragraph here. It says, uh, uh, it is most important to note, to, to note that the Assemblies of God deemed the latter rain movement to contain heresy from the very beginning. Uh, on April 20, 1949, the Assemblies of God officially denounced Latter, Latter Rain teaching, nearly splitting the denomination in the process. Other established Pentecostal groups have passed similar resolutions. Today, the term Latter Rain is rarely used, but the theology of Latter Rain continues to extend, ex- exert an influence. Most branches of the charismatic movement adhere to Latter Rain teaching. Modern movements such as the Brownsville, that's the name I was trying to get, okay. and the Pensacola revivals, yeah, in mm-hmm. Florida, the Toronto blessings, and the holy laughter phenomenon are a direct result of Latter Rain theology. Mm. I want to do a show next week uh, on that, the holy laughter. I would like to talk about that, okay, and some other things that is deemed her- heretic, okay? Wow. We got to be careful of those new things that pop up, and y'all run to it because run the crowd is it. running to it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I hope uh, I didn't offend too many of you guys. Mm. Hopefully when I get home, I'll get to church uh, Sunday, my license will still be intact. There you go. I love the church of God in Christ. God didn't tell me to leave it. Okay. I may disagree with some things, but I love her. She loves me. Mm. And uh, you stay in your denomination if, if you feel led to do that. But teach the truth. Don't teach denominationalism. Teach the doctrine of Christ. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is the preaching of the cross that saves a person, not the name Church of God in Christ or Assemblies of That's God right. or Apostolic or Baptist. Right. Not those names. God didn't create those names. Y'all did. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sure did. Okay. But in scripture, what these, what C.H. Mason did, he took scripture and it says the church of God, which is in Christ. And that's where he put those together and exactly. came up with that name. All churches should be the church of God in Christ. That's right. All of you should be right. because that's who you are. You are the church and you should be in Christ. Mm-hmm. Not, the denomination. Not the denomination. Don't go joining up with Bishop Blake said, I'm, I'm joining you because Sir Walter says I'm supposed to be with you. No. We're talking about the doctrine of what scripture says. You should be in Christ. All your churches. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. we don't have all things in common. And we have 30,000 denominations out there. And That's it's good. unfortunate. That's yeah, good. yeah. Good so teaching. God's going to come and clean up all this mess. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll talk about that further on. All right. I got to go. And uh, we'll see you uh, Monday, Men's Chronicles. Go to Spreaker.com and you can hear the show. Love you guys. Uh, and um, hey, um, let's see. And, um, I've you got, did a good job today. Oh, I did? Uh-huh. Well, thank you. I love your teaching. Well, you do? I do. Well, I love your Bible reading. Well, thank you so much, sir. That That's why I always have you uh, reading for me. Because <laughs> my contacts <laughs> don't always operate under the Holy Spirit. <laughs> contacts see something else. They see something else. I see men like trees. <laughs> and uh, it don't always operate. Go wash so. again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
ain't, I, ain't no pool of salam around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, 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 as, uh, it's going to be a busy weekend mm -hmm. for um, some of y'all, and so get ready. Right. And uh, my brother's having a concert. Mm -hmm. He'll be 50 years uh, next week, and uh, we're going to announce that come Wednesday, and I'm on our music show. Your real uh, brother, Larry Jones. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, my real brother. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alvin Carter's show, he's doing his Reflect, the song, the Reflect. He's doing a concert, uh, his birthday. Good Friday, April the 3rd. Mm -hmm. Good Friday, April the 3rd. Uh, Nehemiah Urban Church Ministries, 7359 South Chappelle. Y'all know the old Monument of Faith. That's right. Uh, Apostle uh, R.D. Hinton. Hinton. Yeah, y'all meet me over there at 7 p.m. That's good. That's Good Friday. Yes. Now they said Jesus died that night, and some folks, some folks said, "What well, was good about it? <laughs> it was great. It was great. It was good that he had suffered for me. Uh -huh. I'm so glad he took my sins away. Yes. I'm so glad. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, some people may ask the question: uh, When he died is not important. The fact that he died, I don't agree with that. Mm. Because we just talked about the feast. Isn't that See, something? if you knew Christ, right. As someone that as uh, as as your savior, your lord, and someone that you really love, mm -hmm. it would be important right. because if somebody died in your family, mm -hmm. you 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 and you had questions about how they died, you get the corner in the end. That's right. And they they you do the, know all the details. What they do the thing is what they test to find out how a person died. Uh, autopsy. Yeah, they do the autopsy, and then they they even know the time of death and everything. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of important. Yes. All right. Well, we need to know why he died. Why he died at the time that he died. That's good. Because he was so care, caring of us that he died at a specific, a specific time because he needed to, again, take care of Genesis through Malachi. In a specific way. In a specific way. That's right. Got to go. That's another show. Love you guys. <laughs> Sir Walter Jones Show.